Today I'm going to show how I painted a multicolored brick wall on a hydrocal or plaster kit from Downtown Deco. So let's get started. So we've got some hydrocal pieces here, which is a plaster formed, but yet there is a you can get some very nice detail in the bricks. See, he's chipped away some of the bricks there. So they can make a very nice model. But we need to clean up these edges. And inside the windows, along the bottom here. So you just take sandpaper and that's it. Beautiful, nice edge. Inside pieces, you can just take a file lightly nice edges there. Now sometimes after you've been filing the plaster for a while, the tools get clogged up. So you just get a brass brush, stiff brass bristles, and scrub them off like this, and then you'll get the particles out of there. Otherwise, it gets too clogged up and doesn't do the job. You can do the same with your sandpaper, then you'll be able to use it longer. So when you get the walls, you want to be sure that each edge that's going to be glued is flat. So I just scraped across sandpaper, which I stuck to a solid flat surface, in this case granite, and then rub it back and forth until you can tell there's no gap anywhere and it's a straight flat line across the bottom. Now once you've done that, the brick mortar lines might have been on the edge if, it was an, if it's an edge that's going to be exposed, so you want to put those back in. So I take an engineer square, which has a lip, which is perfect for this purpose, straight 90 degrees. And then that lip you can put under the back side of the wall. You line it up with the uh, mortar lines using a utility knife. I just used a pocket knife. Once it's lined up, just a scrape or two, and you've got a mortar line. Otherwise, it won't match the adjacent wall. Don't forget to do that. So now that it's been cleaned up, I just used a matte gray rattle can spray paint. Although you can use any color you want. Give it all a good coat. It keeps the subsequent coats of paint from soaking in too much. Just make sure you get all the edges. So I've put two coats of the base spray on the front and I used black matte spray on the top of the back because that will be exposed above the roof and I want that to look dark. But for the base color on all the bricks, I'm going to use burnt sienna, just a acrylic craft paint with a stiff brush. Use a dry brush technique, which means I'm going to put a little paint on the brush. Don't want to add too much. Wipe off a lot of it, in fact, on a paper towel. Then lightly brush the bricks. Make sure everything's coated the way you like it. Be sure not to put too much paint on the brush because you could fill up the motor lines. They're very shallow and the paint is kind of thick. If you want to paint to the motor lines later, this will give you the option. In the past, when I want motor lines to show, after I've painted the wall, I use joint compound and put that on with a putty knife over the whole surface, take off as much as I can with a knife, but then let it dry a little bit, and then with a damp cloth, wipe the residue off the surfaces of the brick. That leaves joint compound in the mortar lines, but you could also use a whitewash. I've done that before, and that will stay in just the mortar lines. It might lighten the brick a little bit, but that adds to the 
aging effect. So your choice, of course, you can do whatever you want. This particular building, I wanted to be very dark. I wanted it to be a dark brick. So I'm not going to add anything to accentuate the motor lines. It's a good idea to look at prototypes, the real thing, if you can. Go to your downtown or any town that has kind of buildings you might want. Look to see what they look like. And when I did that, I noticed most of the dark buildings don't have any visible motor lines. But this is modeling, right? You can do whatever you want, however you think it should look, and that's fine. So I'll finish applying this on all of the walls, and then we'll move on to painting individual bricks. Now I've chosen some colors to paint the individual bricks. I'm going for a dark brick building, so I've chosen uh, some darker colors. I'll paint most of them burnt umber, um, some in black probably, and then I'll do some more with true burgundy and some in some lighter colors. One of them is kind of a yellowish color and the other is tan. But of course, you can use whatever colors you like. They're just acrylic paints. So let's start doing some individual bricks. So I'm going to start painting the individual bricks. I'll start with black and just going to pick some random bricks. I'm using a very fine point brush. Anything from 2-0 or more fine will help. This particular one is 10-0, but it also, of course, depends on the scale of your brick. Just make sure it's a fine point that will stay, the bristles will stay together. Then take a little bit on the brush, very little, and paint the bricks individually. You'll be sure to want to paint random bricks so there's no pattern that builds up. And you'll notice painting at an angle like this tends to get paint on adjacent bricks you don't want to. So I paint as vertically as possible with the brush and that helps me stay in the water lines. So just going to paint a bunch of these. It helps every once in a while to clean the brush off. If you don't clean it off every few minutes, it will build up paint on the tip and make it harder to be precise. So I've painted some individual tan bricks here and there. And now I want to paint some of the yellowish ones. For that, I used this golden sunset. And here you can see where I've painted some of those in random spots. Uh, now I'll paint some dark red ones, and then we will get to the washes. I want to talk about a black wash. I'm going to use this wash on sidewalks, and I like to use a wash made with ink and isopropyl alcohol. And when I've looked for wash recipes, all I get usually is mix until heavily diluted. But that's a wide range of dilutions that, that I didn't find very useful. Luckily, I found in one of my other kits a good recipe that I like. And that is, take a teaspoon of ink, and it's important that it be acrylic ink. If you notice, this is uh, Liquitex brand acrylic ink. And this is carbon black, but you can get raw umber and various colors. But take a teaspoon of this, put it in a pint of isopropyl alcohol, and you have the perfect ratio for a very thin wash. If you decide that's too thin, you can always add some more ink. Once it's in the pint, I then pour it into a smaller bottle like this that's more accessible with a brush, and then refill it as I need it. So I have primed all of the hydrocal pieces with uh, the hand spray paint, this gray. These are the sidewalks. And I'm just going to use these as a demonstration for putting a black wash on them after this. Because this color is good enough for the cement. I can use that as is. But then I want to put a black wash on it. And this is uh, after two coats of the black wash. You can see the uh, change. It looks al already looks weathered. 
Um, and the more coats I put on, the more these cracks will show up. So this was uh, basically before and after this wash. I have made that black wash and just get a wide flat brush. Go over every part of it that will be seen. You can see already what it does to those cracks, brings them out immediately. Now it will dry, um, not quite as prominent as it is now, but multiple coats will then add to the effects. Don't forget to do those outside edges because viewers will see that too. Letting it pool like that a little bit here and there also probably won't hurt because as cement wears from use, it's not even. And that will create a different look. Most likely it'll be even hard to tell that it pooled once it dried dries. So I'm just going to do this everywhere. I'm going to dry it. Looks like I missed a spot there. I'm going to then dry it. You can also use a hair dryer or a little, I have a little space heater that I use to place it in front of it and in just a couple minutes it's ready for another coat. This one is already so I will do that again. And you can do that as many times as you want until you get the sidewalks that you like. These uh, downtown deco kits are so good for the detail that he scribes into and into his molds to make the brick or the sidewalk cement look realistic instead of just flat and plain, which you really see in a town that's been around for a while. So I'm looking for a dark looking building. You don't have to make it. Yours obviously this dark. That's the case. Just thin the wash out some more. All, all I'm going to do is paint over everything with this wash, including this area, so that it'll give it a more aged look sort of blends the colors together a little bit. Softens these reds and yellows because I didn't want bright reds and yellows like that. But I, um, so this will, this will bring down the brightness. Maybe you can see now that it is darker than it was, but I still want it to be a little darker. I'm going to apply another coat of the wash and then we'll see how that looks. I'm happy with this up here so I'm going to leave that. Now here's a picture of one of the walls where I put the black wash, two coats of it, only on the right side just so you can see what it looks like before and after the wash. I've already completed the roof, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I took some Mod Podge and diluted it with water, 3 to 1. Water to Mod Podge. You could use white glue as well. Then I just brushed that onto the plastic roof that came in the kit, so it was nice and even. Then I got some dirt. I bought it at a modeling store, but you can probably get even from Lowe's or something, because... Uh, we're going to sift it through a filter to make sure you get the right size. So I got this at Lowe's. Home Depot would probably have it too. It's a very fine filter for paint. You'll find in the paint department. We're going to use that, pour the dirt through it onto the wet rooftop, and that will make sure only the smallest particles get on there because any big stones will look out of scale on the roof. I'm just looking for some texture on the roof so it's not flat. Shake it around, get all the small particles out. Now this isn't complete. I would have filled up all of the empty white spaces you see here with more, but then I just spray painted it with some rattle can gray. So we jumped ahead a little bit, but most of the steps that I haven't shown are steps I'm sure everyone is familiar with. I used 
five minute epoxy to glue the plaster together at each corner where two walls meet. And that seems to be the best glue that is very solid and stable. I just painted the trim, some colors I wanted, the windows and doors I painted separately before I put them on there so they're a lot easier to paint. And then added some plastic to the back sides of them. I have this uh, Miller Engineering sign, animated sign, which I love. And so I just took a drill, very small drill, maybe 1 16th, and drilled several holes as close together to each other as I could. And then with a utility blade, just cut out the spots in between those holes to make a slot for it, because this is a has a tab that goes back in a slot, and the electronic circuit board is inside. They supplied some metal rods, so I painted it black and just bent it to the shape of a downspout, added it here, drilled a hole on the side, and that's where it's glued up into the side of the wall. Added a piece of paper, construction paper for a shade. The kit provided this wall sign. And so I cut it out. I actually sanded the back side of it to make it even thinner. I wanted it to contour into the bricks as much as possible. And according to the instructions, which worked pretty well, I wet it with white glue on the back, just smeared it smooth so it, there weren't any clumps of it, and applied it. That, that white glue almost immediately makes it very um, soft and pliable. And so once it's in position, took a plastic bag, actually one of the bags that I think the windows came in, and laid it over top, and then with my fingernail, just rubbed down every uh, mortar line and burnished it in basically with that plastic over top. If you don't use the plastic, that paper will tear and come right off and ruin it. So the plastic over top helps a lot. This is a sign I got from a company that makes signs called Ghost Signs, which I can highly recommend. They're very good. Warm water, soluble, slip decals, I think they're called. And so they really take the contours of the brick as well. I burnish that in, just with, just rub that in carefully while it was wet, and it works out fine. They provide this fire escape in the kit. So I just painted it black and then used a sponge with some rust-colored heavy-bodied acrylic and just dabbed it on there to make the rust this dumpster I got from a different kit. But then they gave you this piece of plastic for the roof, which I showed you what I did earlier with some dirt and glue, and then sprayed with rattle can gray. I just took a black wash and dabbed it on in two different dilutions so that it would make some stains and not all look the same. I would say I'm just about done. I'm just finishing some interior pieces. I want to have some appliances in the window because I've made this an appliance repair shop. I also added, I uh, wanted realistic looking curtains. So actually that is just Kleenex folded up and taped inside. And that makes for some little more realistic than a piece of paper for curtains. To make this look worn and used, I just took some powder. I use Bragdon brand powders and then with a dry brush just brushed it onto different areas, hit, hit all the highlights and that even up top that makes it look uh, less perfect and pristine but that of course is up to how you'd like it to look on your layout. And I thought I'd show you what it looks like with the lights on in the inside and the animated sign in the front just before we end here. Hope this video has been helpful and good luck in your layout projects.